Well, how's it going, everybody? And welcome back to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing Doc Talk. Now, if you are unfamiliar with my channel as a whole, welcome to the channel. Subscribe if you like the content. And number two, if you don't know what Doc Talk is, Doc Talk is basically my way of sitting down, usually on a dock and talking. Now, today we are in my backyard, but we're still going to talk about all sorts of cool topics from YouTube to tips and tricks to tournaments and everything in between. Let's get started. Now, our first story of the day comes from Fox News, and it says, Fishing trips are great for your mental health, new study says. New study? I'm pretty sure we've known this for a long time. Now, of course, I'm always a, a proponent of fishing making the news in any way, shape, or form, but I think it's funny that they are kind of putting this as a big, you know, breaking news type story that, wow, fishing trips are great for your mental health. Who knew? I'm going to read some of the article here. It says, if you're feeling down or burnt out, it might be time to get back into nature. According to Niels Eek, 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 psychologist and co-founder of mental well-being and self-development platform Remente, spending time in nature may be the key to good mental health. Several researchers have looked into health benefits connected to spending time out in nature. One study specifically, which was recently published in Bioscience Journal, found that daily exposure to nature can, among other things, help reduce feelings of stress and even improve your self-esteem for up to seven hours. Reconnecting with nature can also help you become more mindful and present in the moment. Another study from the University of Michigan also suggests that being in nature not only improves your mood for the time being, but also has positive long-term effects when it comes to depression and memory, as well as decreasing the risk of certain cancers and high blood pressure. So it sounds like the fishing community is pretty healthy. Now we as fishermen and outdoorsmen of course know that fishing is great for your mental and physical health and it's great to see that you know the studies are finally showing it even though we've known it for a long long time so if you guys want to check out anything more about the study or the article that i just talked about it'll be linked down in the description below as well as everything else that i will discuss in today's video next we're going to move on to two things that i like here real quick the first one is an article by wired to fish that is five tips on when and where to fish a tube and i actually learned a ton from this article because I've seen guys fish a tube in literally every single scenario, but I've always wondered why. You know, being a Texas guy, I never really took on to flipping a tube in grass or wood, but I fished with Clay Dyer, the, uh, the angler with no arms and no legs, and if you guys have not seen that video, highly recommend it. Probably, probably my favorite video I've ever made here on the channel. And he was flipping a tube on Lake Fork, and I thought, you know what, it's probably going to work, and he actually caught the exact same amount of fish that I did on a jig. And so this article really maps out the five best ways that this uh, you know, columnist has thought of to throw a tube. And I just thought they were mostly just a, a bait for smallmouth up north in Minnesota and Canada. But it turns out the tube is actually a very, very versatile bait and one that I hope to add into my arsenal more and more this uh, tournament season. So this next story I'm sure is going to absolutely blow your mind. It, when I heard about the story, my mind was blown. I was confused. I said, that, there's no way that's true. It's got to be, you know, fake news. But here it is. I'm just going to show it to you guys. The Wild West Bass Trail is a bass trail out there in California, similar to uh, Bass Champs and TTZ, which we have here in Texas. They have kind of a uh, semi-large tournament trail with camera guys that follow the angles around and film a TV show for their sponsors. And they happen to have a camera on a boat of a guy named Alex Nia Pass, or Nia Pass, if Alex, if you watch this video, I apologize for butchering your last name. Now, the title of this video is Alex Nia Pass Reels in Two Monster Bass on Shasta. Now, if you guys are unfamiliar with California fishing, I have actually never fished Lake Shasta myself, but I have many, many buddies that have, and just from the looks of it, it looks like a lake that is very, very deep, very clear water, and I've heard it has big bass and a ton of small bass. I've seen tournaments in Lake Shasta where, you know, 12 to 15 pounds can win, and then tournaments like this one at the Wild West Bass Tour, where it took 30 pounds to win. Now you may think a 30 pound bag is huge. You know, most guys fish their whole lives for a 30 pound bag. But the way that this guy, Alex, caught his 30 pound bag was absolutely incredible. Now all of us at one point in our lives want to catch a 10 pound bass. You know, 10 pound bass is kind of like the ultimate goal for most bass fishermen in the world to catch a 10 pounder. And this guy catches not only a 10 pound largemouth, but a similar class fish on the spotted bass range. I'd say an eight pound spotted bass is about the same as a 10 to 12 pound largemouth bass anywhere else in the country. So I'm just gonna show you guys this video and show you guys what happens. This. Here comes this. Oh God. Yeah! Nice. Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! Look at that thing. Dude. That's awesome. 
We're going to Sizzlers. <laughs> you see 13. it? <laughs> I was like, that's two fish for 22 pounds. And I was like, wow. Now that is just insane. Throwing a swim bait in a California lake in a tournament. First off, throwing a swim bait in a tournament in the first place is risky because a swim bait bite is generally a quality over quantity bite. So you're not gonna get many bites throwing it. And oftentimes I've thrown a swim bait for hours in a tournament and not gotten a single bite. And the fact that he was able to anchor his giant 30 pound limit with two huge fish of different bass species is just absolutely insane. I mean, most of us would ever, never even dream about catching a 13 pound bass or an eight pound spotted bass. And he does both in the same day with a camera crew. That's a special day right there. Speaking from experience being a fishing YouTuber and filming you know, 99% of my fishing trips, it seems like the 1% that I have the cameras off, the cameras at home, or the batteries are dead, I catch the biggest bass. And so the fact that he was able to catch those two giant bass with the cameras on and win the tournament, that is pretty special. One more little article and we'll get into some current events here in the fishing industry. Uh, the company that I work with called Angler, if you guys are curious what this thing is here on my hat, this is the Angler Bullseye Tracker. I'll be discussing this in a whole lot more videos throughout this whole year. I'm very, very excited to start working with Angler again. You guys might have seen in my videos or Lake Fork Guys videos for years and years ago that little white tracker that was situ situated on our rods right in front of the reel. That was actually Angler's old tracker. Uh, now they're using the bullseye for the majority of the tracking purposes. But if you are unfamiliar with what Angler is, uh, we just came back, me, Alex Rudd, uh, Fluke Master, and a bunch of other guys, uh, influencers, tournament guys, guides. We all went up to Pittsburgh for two days to brainstorm, idealize, and kind of plan out where we want Angler as a company to go in the future. And so part of that is making Angler not just a tracking platform, a digital logbook to log your catches, but also making Angler the world's biggest and best site for fishing instruction and fishing community. And so one of those ways that we're doing that is through kind of these expert uh, blogs and articles that we're writing. And so I just wrote an article kind of in conjunction with Angler talking about my fishing story. So if you guys are new to the channel, you haven't heard a lot about my story in general, and I believe I actually go a lot deeper into this than I do on any of my videos, I kind of talk about the tips that I give for younger anglers, the way that I got into tournaments, and kind of where I see the fishing industry going as a whole. So that link will be in the description as well for you guys to check out. And I'm telling you, this thing right here, the bullseye, is a sweet innovation, and Angler and I are going to be doing some awesome stuff in 2019. And one more current event that if you guys are at all interested in bass fishing tournaments, you will definitely understand uh, what's happening right now. Major league fishing has begun. I believe by the time this video drops, it'll be tomorrow, I guess. It'll be day three, or officially day two of group A of Major League Fishing. Now, if you are unfamiliar with what Major League Fishing is at all, you just know about Bassmaster, FLW, all that jazz. I'll have a video linked up in this corner describing what happened in the fishing tournament community over the past six months to a year that led to a lot of tournament anglers leaving their prospective professional tours to join Major League Fishing. And so t this week was the first you know, inaugural Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour event on the Kissimmee chain of lakes uh, in Florida. And so what's, what's been so cool is to see the ways the anglers are catching fish in different ways and kind of the strategies that have had to change because now it is not just a five bass limit format, it is weighing every single fish. And so I'm gonna kind of read off. So I'm actually recording this video during group two's first day of competition on, on Wednesday. And so the, the top three anglers currently at this point in the day are Marty Robertson, 44 pounds, three ounces for 26 fish. Anthony Gagliardi, 41 pounds, 14 ounces for 20 fish. And Jacob Prosnick, uh, 31 pounds, six ounces for 19 fish. Greg Hackney is currently leading big bass of the day with six pounds and six ounces. And then I believe Alton Jones Jr., yes, he has the biggest average weight of two pounds, 12 ounces per fish. And so looking back on yesterday's results, we had Randy Howell that is winning uh, for, for group A with I believe just under 50 pounds of bass. And so if you have social media, of course, I'm sure you've seen posts from Bassmaster, Major League Fishing, less so from FLW, uh, but from kind of pros and media representatives on both sides of the industry. And to be honest, I haven't been pleased. I'm a guy that likes to enjoy bass fishing as a whole. I, I, see, I see room for growth in every sector of the sport. And so, yes, it is uncomfortable for me as a longtime tournament angler looking for five biggins to watch guys weigh in every single fish over a pound. It is uncomfortable. It is new, it is confusing. I'm not quite sure if I like it yet, but I do like change and I like growth. 
And so I see so many comments out there about people trashing MLF, people trashing Bassmaster, just because there's all these, it's, it's almost like what we call group mentality, which you know, in, in our politics can, which, which in our political state right now, you can see, of course, two political parties, I'm kind of going off for fishing right now, but are so polarized from one another that if you are, you know, in one group, oftentimes you see the other group as not even human. It's like, if I disagree with your values, I disagree with you as a human being. And that's what I'm seeing to a slight degree on social media right now between Bassmaster and FL, Bassmaster and Major League Fishing. Uh, not so much FLW, I'm sure they kind of get into the beef a little bit, but they've kind of stayed separate from it because Major League Fishing stole so many of the pros from Bassmaster. And so I just want to kind of give some encouragement right now to anybody watching this video. First off, stay out of the comment section. It doesn't you know, do anything good or bad for you if you comment and like things. You know, I even fall into that trap sometimes that I feel like I have to defend certain sides, but I realize that it doesn't do anybody any good to be flamboyant on social media about uh, this topic. I'd say, give it time. Do I think Major League Fishing is gonna succeed long term? I don't know. I sure hope so because I wanna see the sport grow in many, many different ways. But will it? Time will tell. And so that phrase, time will tell, has to let time play out. And so if you guys are you know, sitting back, hating on Major League Fishing for weighing all the fish, I'd say give it some time. Who knows, maybe in two or three years they're gonna realize, okay, people don't like the majority of the fish. The same guys are winning every single tournament. We have to change it up where it's more of like a Texas fest for Bassmaster format where it's still five fish, but it's catch, weigh, and release on the boat. And so there's a whole lot of different avenues I think this could go. I'm not exactly sure where it's gonna go yet, but I'm excited just to see the growth of professional bass fishing as a whole. So that is all that I have for you guys in this episode of Doc Talk. Make sure you guys, if you missed the last episode, I fished with my buddy Brian in my brand new Skeeter boat with the wrap. So if you haven't seen the wrap that I put on the boat, beautiful Lucky Tackle Box wrap all over the dang thing. It's, a, it's quite a gorgeous boat wrap. So make sure you guys click that video link over here or in the description below. And we'll see you guys in the next episode of Tyler's Joel Fishing.